the three screens. One of the dishes China does not want you to know about. Now in our journeys, I would have to say, and safely say, that we ate a lot of crazy stuff around China. Yeah, China has a very diverse, what would you call it, menu. Yeah, honestly, like, there's like, how many, there's like, oh, oh, about 30 provinces in China, right? Yeah. And each one of those could be its own cuisine, right? Yeah. It's crazy, but the thing is, like, the more in-depth, the more you travel, the more people you talk to, the more you realize it's not just about like, oh, this is crazy because it's this hot pot is so spicy. We're talking Mm -hmm. about, like, Weird stuff that, like, you probably would never even consider as food. Right? Yeah, and uh, there's this interesting scenario because obviously China is a mixed bag when it comes to the people. You get a lot of uh, very educated people, a yep. lot of middle class people, mm-hmm. a lot of lower class people. And there's certain things that the sort of educated upper class people, they don't want to be associated with China. Or you get the flip side of that. They don't even know about it. Yeah, they don't know about it. Yeah. I mean, we see a lot of this. Remember, um, the fact that people eat dog in China yeah. is real. Yeah. Okay? But remember, not that long ago, there were a lot of these uh, like live streamers going out there saying, no, Chinese people don't eat dogs. It doesn't happen, you know? Um, but it does. Yeah, it's prolific. Yeah, it's. I've got several videos about it's it. It's in every corner of China. Every city has multiple dog meat restaurants. Yeah, so I mean, the problem is, though, that it, it makes China look uncivilized. Yeah. And a lot of people in China realize this, so yeah. they try to distance themselves. Yeah. So you see this happening with a lot of the interesting dishes that you find yeah. around China, things that I guess the rest of the world would find perhaps not very palatable or not acceptable. Yeah, so in this video, we wanted to cover mm-hmm. on our journey is north yeah. to south. Remember, 15,000 kilometers across, we rode in the back roads of China. Yep. No highways. Nope. Middle of nowhere, right, some of these places. We wanted to cover the stuff that, it's stuff that China wouldn't want you to see yeah. as, a, as a person living outside of China. But it's also stuff that we found very interesting and that yeah. had genuine people behind it and that really wanted to share it with us when we were on our journey, so. Yeah, some of it's gross, some of it's just interesting. You know, some of it you will find repulsive. And some of it you'll just find interesting. It is! It's Rupert! That is Rupert. Are you all right? I think so. And the reindeer, where are they? Reindeer! And they've been in the Bahamas. The Bahamas? Come on in. Come on down. I'll be honest with you, it's never been more dangerous than it is today to be on the internet. And that's why we're super proud to say that today's sponsor is NordVPN. NordVPN is a VPN that allows you to encrypt your connection, to keep your identity safe, to make sure that nobody is seeing what you're doing on the internet, whether you're on public Wi-Fi or your own home internet, It's a fantastic tool that keeps you anonymous and safe. By connecting to one of the many servers around the world, you can make sure that not only are other people not seeing what you're doing online, but also even your internet service provider can't even tell what you're doing. NordVPN is the easiest VPN to use, and it's our VPN of choice. If you go to nordvpn.com slash advchina, you're gonna get a massive deal for this holiday season. You're gonna get four months for free. Not only are you gonna be more protected on the internet, but you're also gonna be supporting the channel. So thanks. So I think we should start out with um, a little something that shocked me when I ordered it, and that was a lamb fetus. And that was not something I was expecting. And again, you see, this is one of those things when you ask for a local specialty or something like this, you might be surprised in in a very bad way. <laughs> yeah, so actually, let's set this up. Yeah. When you're in the middle of nowhere, I shouldn't even say in the middle of nowhere, this was in town. This was in Shenzhen, this in the, middle in of the, the first tier <laughs> yeah. city. Yes. Okay. So, so let that, I won't mislead you. This yeah. is just whenever you're in a new place, I should say, yeah. and you ask... Mm-hmm. Which means, what is your specialty here? And that's something you should always ask because you're in you're in a new area. They're gonna have something special that's yeah. only particular to that area. Yeah. Right. And what happened in your situation? I was at a hot pot restaurant, and uh, you know it was a good night. <clears throat> Had some friends there. We were drinking and we we're having a great time. We we're ordering, 
And with with a hot pot restaurant, you normally order a batch of stuff. You'll get a bunch of meatballs and some vegetables and some sliced meat, you know, shaved meat and stuff. So we asked, like, what's your specialty? And they said this. And at the time, my Chinese wasn't good enough to be able to read Chinese. Sure. Uh, Takes a while. Yeah. So we're just like, I could speak it a little bit. So, you know, um, I said, okay, let's bring that on. And what it was, was, well, when they came, it was like a plate of, it looked like afterbirth. It looked awful. It looked like afterbirth? It kind of actually was. <laughs> it just was. It was. <laughs> so they threw this, because, you know, they bring yeah. this thing and they put it in the pot and yeah. it was expensive as well. It was like, you know, more pricey than most of the things on the menu. Throw it in there. And we just didn't think much of it. And, you know, with Hot Pot, you're digging out bits and pieces. And my friend pulled out a little head of a lamb, like a baby lamb fetus. And that's what it was. It was an unborn lamb because they obviously slaughter the the you know the the goat or the sheep or whatever, and then they take it was a sheep in this case obviously, and they take the unborn fetus and then they prepare it and throw it in the mm. pot. There's a lot of traditional Chinese medicine beliefs that would say, mm. "Hey, it's a young animal. You're going to get youth from this. Mm -hmm. It's going to cost a lot more, right?" Yeah. And so, what did you do with the said lamb? <laughs> Well, I mean, to be honest, we'd had quite a lot to drink, so we were just messing around. It was like a shock to us. Sure. I believe I uh, took it with me. And... <laughs> what? Not in your stomach? No, no, no. We're not going to eat that. No. that was, it's gross sure. this all out. We're not going to eat it. It is a little little too gross. Yeah. yeah. And um, I think I gave it to an annoying beggar. Oh, okay. Interesting. I used to do that a lot in China. Yeah. I used to test the beggars because you get a lot of beggars in China. Yeah, I used to just so many. I think people think that's like uh, I think with Chinese propaganda, we're at a point now where China's convinced the world that only homeless and beggars are only in America. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> it's a huge amount, huge China. amount. But I would always test them because yeah. you know when they come to beg, I would offer them food. Yeah, because they ask for food, but yeah. actually they want no, they want money, they're, and they would always bug you when you're sitting at a restaurant. Mm. You know, like they come on purpose. Yeah, you're outdoors having a meal. They come and interrupt your dinner yeah. so that you just pay them to go away. Yeah, so I'd always it's like offer the annoying them, tactic. Yeah. I'd offer them food or yeah. or drink, and That's then nice. you know they would uh, usually refuse it, or mm. some would pretend to take and throw it away. Yeah, like just right there. Yeah, just want money. Yeah, exactly. Anyway. Let's move on. Yeah. Because that is a perfect segue because you talked about uh, you know, lamb being brought to slaughter. We learned about a very special dish mm -hmm. when we were in southern China in a very particular area of Guizhou, which at the time was the world, uh, the, the poorest province in China. Yeah. And we met with this tribe of Miao. Some of you might know them as Hmong people, mm -hmm. right, if you're in the U.S., yeah. uh, the Hmong diaspora. One of the biggest Chinese diasporas outside yeah. of China, but they're also in Vietnam and Burma and Laos mm. and stuff. Anyway, this specific tribe of Miao were called the Silver Miao. Remember right. them? Yes, I do. And they have this particular dish that's specific only to this tiny, tiny area. In fact, it was almost impossible for us to find it. Mm -hmm. um, even though people talked about it all over the, the region, they didn't know. They only knew someone's uncle that might prepare it, right? Oh yeah. yeah, we eat that sometimes, right? But we found a restaurant through. Yeah, and I remember around. it was it was tough because we'd lined one up. Yeah, and uh, turns out they weren't even in the same city. No, they were like, no, we're like four hundred kilometers away or something ridiculous. So there was a screw up. So we had to just literally go walking around and we found until we found one. Yeah. yeah, and we found it. And what they do is mm -hmm. this tribe. They well, this is what the legend says. Mm -hmm. They take a cow and like the three a.m. and a full moon or something and, sure. and slaughter it. But what the whole point of this is, they take the, the stomachs out. Cows have yeah. multiple stomachs. Yeah. And early in the morning, five a.m. or something, we uh, tagged along for the process. Mm -hmm. They take the the stomach, they cut it open, and they take the contents out of the stomach. And you'd think, okay, that's normal. They eat cow stomach. Cow stomachs like eaten in many countries around the world. No, 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 no. Listen, it's out of the colon. They take the, the stomach leading, mm -hmm. yeah, leading out to the colon. And they take the matter out and they, they squeeze it. We squeezed it too. Yeah. And we squeeze the bile, vomit, and, and poop out of it. Yeah. And that is, is what not you what eat. you throw out. No, that's what you That's eat. what you use as a hot pot base. Just like you mm -hmm. talked about the lamb fetus. Now you have a soup made of shit, for lack of better words, cow shit, mm -hmm. vomit, and bile. Yes. And then you cook the the stomach and the meat in that. Yes. <laughs> it's like the most reverse Uno card. <laughs> it's Yeah, it was uh, quite bizarre. Anyway, that's in our show. It was one of the weirdest foods. I think to this day, one of the weirdest foods anyone could eat. Yeah. And you know that smell mm. of the shit yeah. or whatever? It didn't go off our hands for ages. I think weeks. Probably it took two weeks. It stains you. Yeah, it does. Green. Yeah. 
And then it's like stuck in your skin. Yeah, it's really, really gross. <laughs> um, but you know, like that's in, in general. Yeah. The way that meat or food is sold, like wet markets, mm -hmm. um, the way that things work in China, even in city centers, like cosmopolitan city centers, you would think, oh, people are going to uh, buy their food at a grocery store, kind of like you would in the US, because now they're middle class or upper yeah. middle class. No, the average Chinese person still wants to have fresh food that they go either daily or buy daily. Yes. And they go buy it in a wet market. Oh, yeah. A wet markets, everybody, even the most cosmopolitan people. See, usually the family structure, how it works in China is the young uh, couple, let's say, they're just newly married and they're working and they're, they're the sophisticated ones, right? The newer generation. Their parents are, the, are living with them, right? To look after their grandkids. That's what the that's how the family structure works, and the grandparents usually go in the mornings to go and buy the stuff from the wet markets. So even if the sophisticated younger couple still like to go to a shopping mall to buy some kind of I don't know something sophisticated from a fancy place, the grandparents are cooking the food at yeah. home, and they're still going to these wet markets. So everybody's eating from these wet markets. Yeah, and the way that they get the food, like so, the wet markets are a zoo on their own. Oh like, yeah, it's crazy. Split animals, cut heads. The pig heads are wide open. You see the brains, the mm -hmm. dog meat, goat meat, his intestines, his guts everywhere. It's if you're squeamish, you won't like wet. Oh, markets. you won't like the it. smells. And it's called wet market because the floor is wet. It's just a festering bacteria and fest. Depending on where you go, because in some of the bigger cities, they made it illegal to keep live animals now yeah, because of yeah. all the disease outbreaks. But if you're in a rural area, the, the animals are still all alive. Not even rural. Yeah, like, I mean. Just says not like a not first tier city. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so you'll have like, it's like an animal, it's like a pet shop. Yeah, it is. You know? Like a weird exotic pet shop. But even the way that the food gets to the place mm. is really interesting. Like the way that things are transported in China. When we, we just went to Vietnam not that long ago. And they had some of the same practices that China mm -hmm. has, like getting meat on the back or like a pig on the back of a motorcycle. But yeah. in Vietnam, they covered it. Yes. Everything was covered. There was like another layer of like cleanliness on top mm -hmm. of everything. In China, stuff's just wide out in the open. Yeah. I mean, you will often see if you're riding early in the mornings or driving somewhere, you'll see split pigs. Yeah. Filthy unrefrigerated pigs. That's foul, foul, foul. Um, just lay, just laid over the back of a motorcycle. Sometimes dragging on the ground, you know. Yeah. And it's just <laughs> filthy, you know, with all the dust and the exhaust fumes, and it's just out there in the open. Yeah. And remember when we went to that uh, that one place that specialized in beef? Yeah. And oh God. The uh, preparation there was. That was a CC I'm just gonna be honest with you. That was a CCP meeting. Yeah. We went to a meeting with CCP members, not yeah. because we were, <clears throat> we meant to. It's like a family. Yeah, thing. yeah. But it was like a meeting of CCP people, and they're like, "We must go to the specialty beef restaurant." We're like, "Oh, this is gonna be one of those government like lavish things." No. It was like a truck stop hole. It was awful, man. Like, yeah. but it was just, expensive. Just going in there, and there's like literally truck tires and stuff on the side of the road. It's yeah. terrible. Big trucks barreling past. Yeah. But inside, the way they were handling the meat, yeah. and then the, the the truck that they transported the meat in, yeah. it's just rust. Yeah. It's like blood and rust. Yep. And they hang it up in there, and there's no refrigeration. It's open. It's like a cage type thing. Not good. No. When it comes to transporting uh, food in China, it's very dicey. Oh, it's horrific. Because they don't use refrigerated trucks. No. And so I guess everything's supposed to be all fresh and stuff, so they kind of kill it, and they throw it in the back, and they drive it to wherever it's got to go. But yep. I mean... On the way, it's just being bombarded by China. Yeah. You know? Remember we were talking about the... What yes. is your specialty here? One time I was in a place uh, with some family members, mm. and their local tse was two things. Yeah. One was a scorpion soup, and one mm. was a centipede soup. Right. The idea was that you don't eat the scorpion or centipede. The essence comes out into the soup, but it's still in the bowl. Yeah, right? yeah. But I thought that's ridiculous. If you're going to drink the soup, because it's called he tang, he tang in, in, in Chinese, it's not, not to yeah. eat the soup. You drink the yeah, soup. Drink you just soup. drink the liquid. Yeah. But I was like, that's ridiculous. If you're going to cook an animal, then I might as well eat the animal, right? Yeah. So I tried out the uh, 
the centipede, centipede version. I've had the I've had the scorpion one. Scorpions actually don't taste that bad. Mm-hmm. It t- kind of tastes like nuts. I know we we had those fried scorpions yeah, in they're, Beijing they're and stuff. They're like a street food yeah, and it's like it's a tourist thing. Yeah. yeah, it's like a crispy nut. It's not nice though. No, no, no. I'm just, but it's not. You're not gonna go like, oh my gosh. No, because the centipede is to this day. The worst thing I've ever eaten in my life. <laughs> worse than cow shit hot pot. Worse than anything. The taste I'm talking about. Right. Just the taste. Not the squeamishness. Oh, this is a weird bug. The taste is like the smell of garbage juice at the bottom of a bin. <laughs> yeah. It's truly horrific. And yeah. it's, uh, it's it, you can tell you're not supposed to be eating it. It's a giant centipede. You know, you've had those run on your shoes yeah, yeah, in yeah. Southern China. Yeah. Absolutely disgusting. I mean, uh, it's like a warning sign from nature. When you look yeah. at the thing, you're like, I should not be going near it. No, it's especially Never mind eating, eating it. it yeah. Right? yeah, It looks mean. They're it's got scary. those pincers at the back. They you know, are the... scary. Oh, yeah, they're not cool. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, we brought up in the beginning, we were talking about the three screams when we teased yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's time, if you're squeamish, maybe skip. You know that you can push the forward button yeah, yeah. on push the it YouTube video. Yeah, push it a couple times. Push it a couple times. Maybe you can explain the three screams. Well, because I do have to say one thing first. Yeah. It's something I've seen in real life. Mm-hmm. Um, this is not just like not an legend. urban legend. This is something I've seen again. Family members mm-hmm. consume, and I will say this: the majority of people in the room were not cool with it. Right. Even even like really straight up Cantonese people were like, "This is too gross," and left. Right. Okay. But some some family members participated. In no, this. I mean they they enjoy it, right? Yes. Some people. <clears throat> and I, I find there's a a big lack of respect for life in China. You know, when it comes to, yeah, I mean, everywhere in the world, people eat meat, right? But usually they're killed humanely, sure. right? Yeah. In China, they don't care if something suffers. In fact, they, they encourage it yeah, when it comes to like dog meat and, stuff, and, yeah. and so on, because they think it makes the, the meat more tender or it's not flavorful, yeah. flavorful or whatever. They don't whatever. like tender, actually. A lot of yeah, people sorry, like tough. Yeah, more fla- <laughs> flavorful. But they've got all these silly myths that if a creature suffers then it's yeah. better for the yeah. taste which is ridiculous because it releases adrenaline into the meat terrible, yeah. you don't want that right no. but it's an awful practice so you do see them like literally torturing animals so you get a lot of these horrible things but the three screams is basically a um it's a bunch of little baby mice or rats okay you know pinkies and uh what they do is it's called the three screams because when you pick it up it makes a scream when you, with the chopsticks. Yeah, with chopsticks. When you dip it in the sauce, it makes a scream. And then when you bite it, it makes a scream. So you're eating a live baby mouse. I mean, what what are you? Are you a snake? <laughs> you used to feed those to snakes. <laughs> it's worse know? because the snakes swallow it whole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They don't chew it up. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's gross. It's one of those gross dishes that, it's like real. I was saying in the beginning, I think most sophisticated Chinese people would like to distance themselves well, from. And rightfully so. Like like I yeah. said, the majority of people in the room, because it was a big gathering, right, yeah. when, I, when I was around mm-hmm. this, and the vast majority of people are not cool with it. Yeah. They're like, that's awful. I also feel like it's dirty to eat baby rats yeah, and mice. Yeah, you probably shouldn't be eating live baby mice. Yeah, yeah. Shouldn't be eating anything alive. No, not a good and idea. And that, that is quite a common thing I find in, in China. You know, even with the seafood, they love eating live stuff, especially like the drunken prawns or whatever. Or like the sea penises that we had to eat. Oh, yeah, those. We're in northern China. But we cooked them before. No, we, no, prepared, we didn't cook we them. They were prepared, raw. Yeah, but we prepared them first. Yes, yeah, so we, we snipped out their organs and everything. Yeah, but yeah, so. the, uh, they still move when you're eating them, which is really disgusting. Yeah, that is all That right. is a, it's like some sort of slug, almost like a slug that lives yeah. on the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. But it looks like a member. Yeah. And to prepare it and cut oh dude uh, you gotta watch if you're, if you're a man yeah it's that's, bad it's all in the documentary you yeah. know if you want to see about that but you know speaking of mice and stuff i did eat a, a rat you did you did i eat I a, better i yeah you ate a rat at least they didn't lie to you about it because the barbecue restaurant i used to go to all the time with one of my uh african co-workers mm-hmm. uh, and friends we used to go to this barbecue and they would have uh it was it was dove right okay. barbecue dove and it turns out it was rat, and it got <laughs> shut down. So at least you knew you were eating rat. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> oh man, but it was vile because <laughs> yeah, yeah. the thing is, like, for it was for that third documentary I did, Stay Awesome China, which you can watch on my channel for free, by the way, if you go there now to Serpent today. Um, they had these rats, but they're supposed to be these fresh mountain rats or whatever. But the camera guys went into the kitchen, and they were just frozen gross rats that they threw in the microwave to thaw out, okay? 
<laughs> that makes it so much worse. And then they quickly fried it, you know, to like. I've had cane rat. Yeah. Like sugar cane rat and bamboo cane rat in China, it tastes fine. It was a big fat yeah. thing. No, no, this this thing didn't taste good because it was like it was old, frozen, microwaved, and then quickly fried rats. And it was really not good. It wasn't good to eat. Because, uh, yeah, I've had, like I said, I've had those big ones, yeah. right? Those are, those taste fine. Yeah. But you ate, like, what I accidentally ate. Yeah, like, I'm but, pretty sure that this wasn't some specially bred cane rat or, like, yeah. mountain rat. Didn't look Pre- like it. Pretty sure it was just a rat. Because, <laughs> you know, you get those big rats yeah. in the oh, cities. Oh, they're huge. So why not just catch them and, you know, prepare them? You know what catches rats, though? What? Are cats. Oh, yes, that's true. And there's yeah. a dish called long hu feng that we had mm-hmm. to eat. Yeah, we ate that in southern China. In southern China. And it, the, the idea is that there's a dragon in it. So yeah. they kill a snake. They put a snake in there. It's got a who, it's got a tiger. So yeah. they kill a cat. Mm-hmm. And they have a fung, which is like a phoenix, right? So they have and a chicken. It's supposed to be a chicken. So you have all yeah. those. And it's like a special. It's one of those things that like most people in Guangdong definitely know about. Yeah. Now, that's not really a frowned upon thing, but it's expensive. Yeah. Um, and it's hard to prepare, obviously. But yeah, that's. Families make it all the time. Yeah. That's something we ate, and that was one of those more morally dubious things. I kind of, I kind of hope that they didn't kill a cat for that, and I'm hope I kind of saw them kill a snake. Yeah, we didn't see him kill a cat. I think we saw them kill the chicken, or at I'm, least they had. I'm chicken. hoping that he like because it was expensive, right? Very I'm expensive. hoping that he just substituted some chicken or something and said, "There's cat." Oh yeah, that's cat. Yeah, because I really don't like the idea of a. cat. No, being, I don't want to eat a cat either. We yeah. did it for the show, obviously. Yeah, yeah. And back then, you know, we were in China and things yeah. were different, but yeah. Um, I kind of hope it was substitute. Yeah, we can, we can only hope that you can see that on the show too. Yeah, there's um, concrete Southern China. Yeah. In that uh, mm. in that night, we actually drank the snake gallbladder oh, wine, was, but it's literally just that was just horrible raw ass gallbladder. Remember they? <laughs> what you they were, they were like we're very famous here, not just for the cat dish, you know, not the, not just the snake cat dish. We're really famous for our medicinal alcohols. And so usually what that means is there's a like ginkgo root in there and yeah. some and the nuts and then maybe some herbs and roots. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's, every family, especially down south, is famous for their own concoction. Oh, yeah, my aunt grows the best uh, lobo. She puts that yeah. in alcohol or something. These guys are like, we're famous for our animal alcohols, medicinal alcohols. So if you drink this, it'll make you strong like a man. It'll make you have erections. Yeah, yeah that was their thing, yeah. So we, we're like, okay, snake gallbladder. They take it, they mix it around or whatever you drink it. But they had an entire like crow. <laughs> I remember the bubble. upside down bird <laughs> was, with its feathers and everything. <laughs> totally preserved like a science experiment. It's got all of its dust mites. It's got <laughs> yeah. all its like little lice and everything it on it. It wasn't picked clean. It wasn't. No, cooked. it's it wasn't. just they just took a crow and threw it in alcohol. <laughs> like a like a roadkill crow. Yeah. Or like a hawk or something. I don't know, but it was gross. Yeah. It's had, when it's got all its feathers and you don't want that because if you think about it. Doesn't matter what animal you're throwing in there. If it's unprepared, it's still got all its feces inside yes. of it and all its guts and all its weird stuff. That's they just chucked a whole ass bird. Yeah, a in whole a bird. pot of baijiu. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, you yeah. see that around China a lot. Mm. I mean, I I've got tarantula kind before. Um, oh yeah, scorpions, dude. Scorpions, all that kind of stuff. You can find that. In fact, I'm pretty sure I've got some footage we can throw up here of yeah. where you just get jars full of. Bees and, yeah, bees, and, bees. You know, whatever, just any yeah. random insect or mice or animal. We ate giant hornets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We ate fried giant, giant hornets. Um, man, we've eaten some really just, crazy things. We could go on for like yeah. hours about this. Point is, uh, you can see all this stuff in the documentaries that we did. Fifteen thousand yeah. kilometers across all of China. Um, click the link below. It's vimeo.com slash on demand slash conquering China box set. Yeah. And it's half price right now. So you get yeah. both the shows. You get conquering Southern China, conquering Northern China. Normally they're separate. Yeah. Get them together. And you also get the one hour behind the scenes thing. That's which important never been released, because uh, there's some footage of us interacting with some North Koreans that, that we had to cut off. China, yeah. And that was our favorite part of the trip. Yeah. And we wanted to share it and we couldn't because some people's lives were in danger. Yeah. But now it's in the behind the scenes. Yeah. It's safe. You can watch it now. So we implore you to go check it out. I mean, you've gotten a taste of it here. We've shown you some of the footage. But if you want to see it done properly, you know, like we actually filmed proper documentaries. Go check that out. You'll really enjoy it. I can guarantee. So, guys, uh, thank you for joining us on this culinary tour. Um, Remember, this is not to say that all Chinese food is weird. In fact, it's amazing stuff. But these are just some. Yes. And there are more. 
Yeah. Like the little boy piss eggs. Oh, this is a lot. And the, the mal done, the eggs that have still got an embryo inside. And the, how, about, uh, how about the poop alcohol? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There's that too. We got like, yeah, lots and lots of interesting things. But we thought we'd just uh, share some of our experiences. We can't wait to see you in the next video. So until then, you know the drill. As always, stay awesome, guys.